Okay, so we're going to start at the front and work our way back. First things first, I've taken some bolts out already, so the last bolt to take the screen off. And now it should just pull out. One of the little tabs just fell on the floor, I'll pick that up in a second. Next we have to take the left hand side fairing off just as we did with the right hand side, so that's coming off next. That was a tight one. <laughs> okay, so there's one more actual bolt now uh, down the bottom here. There should be one there as well, I think, but that's been removed. That's loose as it is. So I just need to take this bolt off and then that final hex key out and this panel will be off. And it feels like it might be around about 10 mil and it is good guess question is is there a nut on the inside of it Okay, so I try to take that nut off, and it's a captive, sorry, a bolt rather, and there's a captive nut on the inside which you can't get out at all with a spanner to hold it while you try to undo this. So the only way I can take it off is to just basically snip off the connecting piece of uh, metal here, and then I'll just re weld it back on or weld a new piece on because it's pretty rusty anyway. So I've got my little tin snips in there. And done. Two seconds. Okay, so there's just one more hex key to take out, and then this side's off. The connector for the indicators needs disconnecting. And then Okay, so that's the second side off. Uh, quite dirty under there, but I'm going to give this a wash. Once I've taken all these panels off, it's going to get uh, sprayed with degreaser left uh, a day and then thoroughly jet washed off to clean off all the muck and the grime uh, before I start taking it apart and replacing parts and actually with the engine covers and the clutch cover, uh, scrubbing them down and repainting them as well. So that's that. Next, let's get off the front fairing. Hmm. Now I have been using the little storage here for the nuts and bolts I've been taking off and uh, I'll continue to do that. Uh, but this has got to come off. I think there's just the two little Phillips screws holding it and then this cover comes off as well. So let's get that off next. I think that's all the soldering in place. So this should just lift out. Make sure I don't drop all the nuts and bolts I've collected in there. And that's the 
instrument binnacle cover off. Next then is the front fairing itself and there's a bolt either side for this. I think that's all that's holding it. Just the two bolts. Ah, there's two more down inside on either side as well. So you've got two on the top up here and then down inside there are two more. So let's do the top ones first, they'd be the easiest. Well, he says that. <laughs> These looks like 13 millimeter. And these hold the mirrors on as well, of course, to the bracket inside. So I'll just put this nut back onto the mirror. Like that. That's one mirror. Let's just lift it up a bit so you can see a bit more. And then the same the other side. Now if I was going to track day this of course I wouldn't have to worry about putting the mirrors back on but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet whether I'll restore it to the ZZR with the full fairings. Somebody's actually suggested to turn it into a street fighter. Um, not so sure about that myself. Anyway that's the second mirror. That was nice and easy. Okay so now we've got these four bolts to either side. So I'm going to need a long extension. Actually, I don't think I need to take this off at all. I think it will come off without that. By the looks of it. Yes, it does. Just need to disconnect the headlight. There we go, that's that, side light, and the front fairings off. Now, does anybody know if you can get LED versions of this? If you do, down in the comments, give me a little mention there and where you can get them from. So that's the front end stripped apart from the mudguard, which I think I'm gonna to have to take the wheel off first to get at the fixings to take that off. So next comes the tank. Let's get that off. So first then, let's just remove the seat. And then we can get to the tank fixings. There's two at the bottom here and one at the top. Now apart from that we have to disconnect the hoses of course, the fuel, fuel, fuel feed hose at, underneath and the breather hose here. So I'm just going to disconnect that breather hose and I'll slide it up. I may have to release the side panel as well. But we'll see how it goes. So it might just lift off without that. Let's get these bolts out. Okay, so these are 6mm 
X, I think. Not especially loose. That one's loose. I'm going to take these out and I'm going to put these back in to the holes they came out of. So I don't lose them. That's two. So it just leaves the one at the front up here. And that one's loose as well. <laughs> okay. Seems some DBs under here in the past. I'll have to. When was it now? Um, is it 40 years old? This bike is. I would imagine somebody's been under here a lot in the past. So that's the three out. I'll just take that little grommet off the top of there so it doesn't get lost. And put it on the right bolt because two of them are short and one is long. The long one being the top one, of course. And they're all secure with that. So, let's see if we can take the tank off. Let's lift it up nice and easy. Now we've got to disconnect the fuel line. And this fuel line is broken as well. So I'm going to have to replace the fuel line. But now it is disconnected. Yeah, these lines are Toast. They're all going to need replacing. I expect that's the reserve. Yeah, okay. Let's get the tank off. Put it out the way. So now we can see underneath. And I've got to say, apart from the hoses being, well, basically falling apart. Uh, the rest of it looks okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, a breather. Let's put that back on. Because I don't want water getting in there when I wash it. Uh, the wiring looks okay. Not too dirty. The actual plug leads look really good. There's some taping's been done here for something. Something's been taped up, I'm not sure what, so I might have to look into that, make sure it's done properly, uh, but yeah, the rest of it looks okay, onwards and upwards then, next stop, rest of the back fairings, let's get them off, okay then let's start by getting out these bolts, 30 mils socket, that's one, that's two. And off comes the grab handle, sissy bar, whatever you want to call it. Now that's off, we've got two Phillips head screws to remove. And now they're out. We've got two hex bolts under the clips here and one down near the frame and then the side should just come off and there is also another just under here at the back by the brake light you need to re remove that one as well there's one Two hex bolts here, 
different size again. This one. I'm going to leave this in at the moment just so that I can undo the bottom one and then the whole of the side should just come off. So there you go, it's only got a couple of threads left. Let's get the bottom one off. And the bottom one is a Phillips screw, which only took two seconds to get out. And then this and now it should just slip off. And that's it, off he comes. Now, if you have a look in the back here, you'll see the fitment for an indicator lamp. But on the front face of the cover here, it's actually, well, just looks like a normal fitting. It's not orange as it should be for an indicator or red, I suppose, in the United States. I can never remember. Anyway, um, it's a bit of a thing about that because Many of the ZZRs had that orange indicator built into the fairing here, uh, but the 250 for some reason didn't. That said, if you actually look on the inside, you'll see that it is actually just painted over. Um, so I'm going to try removing the paint and see if we can get back to the original, and then I'll take these horrible ones off so that the uh, indicators will be actually integrated once again as they were on the other bikes. Anyway that's that off. I've got one little bit here to get off and she's stripped ready to go. I've just got to take that front fender off, front mudguard and um, to do that I'm going to have to take the wheel off. I need to do that anyway or need to do some work there anyway because the front brake caliper is seized and it's really really difficult to move this thing with that seized. So back we go then to the 13 mil. No, nope, it's going to be 10 mil. And this should just lift off. And that's all the fairings off. I'm going to disconnect the battery, of course, before I wash it. Uh, but everything I want off is off for now. I'm going to cover it in degreaser, leave it, and then uh, tomorrow, maybe the next day, I'll wash it properly, jet wash it, and then we can start the restoration work. Well, guys and girls, thanks for watching again, and uh, ride on and ride safe.